What, you love Positive TV too? Well, I love you, GT Lightning. So it's the 31st of July, 2011, and uh, we're here at the Bridgestone Eco Rally with all manner of exciting alternative transport. Hope you enjoy. My name is Robert Llewellyn and I'm standing in the middle of Oxford, surrounded by eco-cars. I think the, the market has expanded incredibly quickly and the conversion rate is, is on a, an upward spiral. And by that I mean when people who are very sceptical who think it's uh, you know, green wash or it's nonsense or their batteries will run out and you won't be able to drive them and they're, and they're too expensive. They just, as soon as anyone gets in an electric car, regardless of their background, they go, oh, this is brilliant. Then they might have other concerns later on, but the, the initial response is always absolutely positive. Jeremy, as you know, I'm Stephen Glazer, I'm the founder of the Eco Rally. Well, Our fifth year. Fifth year? Here we are in Oxford this time, In Oxford. Stephen. We're not in Brighton anymore, we've changed to Oxford. Why? Uh, why? Well, Brighton's a wonderful place, you know, it's by the sea, we've all got friends there, but um, there's a lot of people there and we just thought the rest of the country needs a looking. We've got about 20 in the actual rally and about the same number on display uh, at the Mall in London. Okay. All kinds of technologies, lots of electric this year, as you can see, hybrids. There's a car that runs on wine there and cheese way, um, body concepts, they're all here. Hello, I'm Mohamed Sadiq, I'm a general manager for Genico a renewable energy company that's uh, based in Bath. What is your car fueled by? Our car, this car here behind me, the Biobug, the Love Bug as it's called, is fueled, believe it or not, from uh, the gas that has been derived from sewage sludge. Um, your car is fueled, fueled by food, is that yeah. Indeed it is, yes. Delta E4 Coupe, wow, I got it right, which is a, an all-electric sort of supercar, it's a four-seater, quite a small four-seater, but it is a four-seater, very, very fast, all the engineering done in this country, carbon fibre composite body, it drives like, it's terrifying, you, you are basically, when you get in that car, just tear your licence up, throw it out the window, because you're going to prison. <laughs> you know, it's not totally silent, it's silent just when you go really, really slow, something like five miles per hour. But once you, once you start to using the accelerator, it makes some of amazing electric sound, like a sort of, yeah, really electric now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how fast does a Tesla go then? Tesla Roadster is really, really fast. It goes from zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds. It's a bit of a feeling there. <laughs> That's the head slammed back against the, dash, the headrest feeling, which uh, everybody's looking for. Um, how much is a Tesla Roadster these days? How much does that cost? It starts from £84,000, which is uh, just a reasonable price if you compare this kind of car with the other super sport cars. Especially if you consider that on this kind of car, you can forget about, obviously, the gasoline. So down here we have something that indicates your range. Exactly, yeah. You have, yeah, um, 196 miles left and um, I can guarantee you that with a, fully range, with a full range you can easily make 245 miles. 245 miles? Yeah, exactly. Okay, and so and what would it take you to charge your Tesla uh, how long would it take to refuel, as it were? Yeah. For a fully charged, um, it goes from 3 hours to 13, 14 hours. But the really important thing is that you can charge the roaster through any conventional plug. Yeah, that's very important. So just a standard plug into the wall, exactly. yeah, wherever the you are. The one you use for your mobile, yeah, wherever you are, exactly. 
And what is the cost of uh, per mile, do you reckon, of the electricity? Um, what I can tell you is that in a market like the UK, a fully charged, considering the cost of electricity, a fully charged cost about 3.5 pounds, which is nothing. If you think that with a fully charged, you have a range of 245 miles. <laughs> it also turns heads quite a bit as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tom Emerson from Aston Martin. Uh, I mean, there's the biggest shock of them all. First of all, Aston Martin. Yes. You're making a compact. Yes. Well, this is actually our first entry into the Bridgestone Eco Rally, an uh, inaugural appearance. Uh, the signal behind me is our environmentally conscious option. Uh, it's built tailor fit for the city, built purely as an option for those that enjoy the luxury and the lifestyle of an Aston Martin, but very much. I don't necessarily like the size uh, or the fact that it's a V8 or V12 engine, so it's an, an option that we haven't offered before and we're quite keen to open up the prospect of Aston Martin to new audiences uh, and new individuals and whilst offering the same level of fit and customization that you would expect from sports cars. So, uh, it's a petrol engine, but obviously yep. it's very low emission, I take it? Absolutely. What sort of figures does it have? Oh, if we look at 50 miles per gallon uh, as an average, is, is quite a good fit, uh, but it's, it's more about how we manage to fit luxury into a smaller package. Uh, usually luxurious is meant increasing size, yeah, if you think luxury cars, Rolls Royce Phantom is kind of bigger and better uh, than many others out there. Uh, now we manage to get that same luxury into a smaller package, so it's more about the usability whilst having the added benefits that the miles per gallon are very, very good, uh, the combined cycle is excellent, as well as being luxurious. This is actually, uh, there's a, a designer in London called Tom Dixon and this is his hallmark colour uh, as a homage to him. We've done a, a collaboration and this is the result. Uh, we do offer in slightly more subdued tones. We've got the Seychelles Blue just next door which is the same colour as Prince Charles' DB6 which the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge drove in their wedding day. Hi, I'm Samantha Fox. Hello to Positive TV. And I'm Kim Woodburn. Hello to who? Positive, positive TV. TV. Positive TV. Oh, yes. Because we're so positive. That's it. As you can imagine. That's what you're doing here today. We're promoting eco-friendly environment and we're doing for the Bridgestone uh, Eco Rally. Our cars are run on, uh, not on petrol. We've got them on all sorts, haven't they? Yes, and we've it's, got... it's making a clean environment, which we're all for. We're all four. We're driving two cars today, the first being a Mitsubishi, run on battery, yes. and the second being a Peugeot. What's that going to be run on? The, the Peugeot is uh, low emissions, diesel and electric. But it's incredible because, let's be honest now, if this can be achieved, which it is being achieved, think of the, the you can run your car cheaper with no petrol. Exactly. I mean, petrol's beyond people. And it's also a cleaner environment, which I'm all for that. Exactly. If you watched me all those years ago on How Clean Is Your House, what did I promote for cleaning? Vinegar? Lemons, bicarbonate of soda, eco-friendly. So, eco-friendly cars, yes. And we have to think about our future generations. We certainly do. And with chests like ours, we can't, we can't heave, do we? can't heave. We fall out. <laughs> we, we, and we're driving in a topless inside. car to Buckingham Palace. I mean, we won't be topless, just the car. Sorry. Well, I'm going oh. topless, didn't I tell you? <laughs> Five, four, three, two. stop here because the BRE and the Innovation Centre is really what I call the kind of Formula One of the eco home world so it's, it seems quite fitting that we've got some of these really high tech cutting edge cars. We stop here to take a look at some of these cutting edge homes so for me the perfect pit stop. Good to see you. Thanks so much for far. coming. Unbelievable. I'm going to get one. We know that if we want to carry on driving cars, we've got to change the way we're doing it. And we don't quite know what the future's going to look like now, but we have to give ourselves as many opportunities as possible to make sure that we can make it a sustainable future.